Uh, it, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our president-elect to be president tomorrow, uh, Diane Freeman, and Diane is going to introduce uh, Tim Hudak. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's hard to come back together after having a big lunch, so I hope that uh, everyone uh, can shake out the uh, lunch and stay tuned for Mr. Hudak. I think that you'll find his presentation to be really inter interesting this afternoon. I really can't imagine that there's anyone here today not interested in building. Be it rival to the world's tallest building, the next blockbuster gadget from Apple, and I'm an early adopter, by the way, so if you want to see an iPad, I have one. Um, or whether or not that's building sound public policy. In a few minutes, Mr. Hudak, leader of the Ontario PC Party, will expand upon the latter type of building. His address, titled Building the Foundation for Economic Renewal, Tim Hudak's plan to get Ontario growing again, provides a perspective on how today's economic challenges affect Ontario's professional engineers. Not only will he outline the ideas of the Ontario PC Caucus to create jobs and grow the economy, he will also e examine the importance of engaging more professional engineers in the political and policy-making processes at Queen's Park. Mr. Hudak was first elected to the Ontario Legislature in 1995. During his 15 years in politics, he has held three separate portfolios, consumer and business services, culture, tourism and recreation, and northern development and mines. He is a critic for citizenship and immigration and served as critic for finance, research and innovation, public infrastructure renewal, and other areas. After earning an economics degree from the University of Western Ontario, Tim was awarded a full academic scholarship to the University of Washington, where he obtained a Master's in Arts and Economics before entering public life. He worked for the Fort Erie Economic De Development Corporation. Tim is very passionate about a number of issues, including good jobs and opportunities for Ontarians, strong businesses and investment opportunities, and protecting seniors and families from consumer fraud. Please join me now in welcoming Mr. Tim Hudak. Well, thank you very kindly, uh, Diane. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. And before I begin, uh, Diane, I also want to congratulate you on your new role as president and CEO. Congratulations. And uh, of the, ah, uh, sorry. I just gave you two promotions at once. Yeah, I, I hate to break the bad news. I'll enjoy the day anyway. I wanted to make a big announcement today, so why not start right off the top? So, Diane, whatever your job is, congratulations. I, uh, I know you have been a, a good uh, friend uh, and colleague as well of my colleague uh, at Queen's Park, Elizabeth uh, Whitmer, who is our uh, education critic, a longtime MPP for Waterloo. She sends her best to you as well. And uh, all the best and uh, commendations uh, well deserved to outgoing President Catherine Carrickett Sansis as well for her leadership uh, on behalf of the Ontario Centre for Engineering and Public Policy, the Professional Engineers of Ontario. Uh, the work that she's done, taking an active interest in provincial policy and by offering an engineer's perspective on a whole range of provincial issues from infrastructure to energy, the environment, to health care, deserve our commendations and thanks. I wanted to say too at the outset, I do appreciate Diane give a very nice introduction, which I'm very grateful for. She did leave one thing out of my bio that people often find interesting or react to, but during my time uh, to help pay for my uh, education at uh, Western and Washington, I did work as a border inspector. Yeah, that's the kind of reaction I usually get. The pe between uh, Buffalo and Fort Erie, the Peace Bridge there, I was a customs inspector. I do want you to know before I begin my speech, though, if you came through my line and you showed me your engineer's ring, you went up the highway duty and tax free. <laughs> it was a very interesting job, by the way. 
You learn a lot about people, the lengths sometimes that some individuals will go through to smuggle things across the border. You felt good about protecting the country from contraband, firearms, drugs, illegal tobacco, and also keeping some rather nefarious characters on the other side of the border. And in fact, that's how Howard Brown and I first got to know each other. <laughs> but those records are sealed for 20 years or so. so. Friends, you know, they say an engineer's perspective is not that the glass is half empty or half full, but that it's twice the size that it needs to be. <laughs> and we need that kind of thinking, especially these days at Queen's Park. In fact, I would argue that this current government could use people who recognize excess when they see it. So with that in mind, I wanted to talk about two things particularly today. First, I'd like to offer my thoughts on the role professional engineers should have in shaping public policy in our great province. And second, I want to lay out four different choices that an Ontario PC government would make to put our province back on the road to recovery. And these choices are all based on our practical and affordable ideas included in our Ontario PC Caucus 10 for 2010 plan which ideas which could be put into place today to help stimulate job creation and move our economy forward. In fact, you get a chance when you're home, it's 10for2010.ca. I look forward to your feedback if you have a chance. We were actually going to call our plan 11 in 11, but somebody beat us to that. <laughs> so giving respect where respect is due, I will start by talking about your plan first of 11 in 11. And I want to applaud the PEO's impressive and forward-thinking ideas to get 11 engineers elected to the Ontario legislature in 2011. You know, right now when I looked around, my survey tells me there's only two MPPs currently in the legislature who have an engineering background, including one of my colleagues, a PC member Norm Sterling from Eastern Ontario, and currently there are, there are no uh, engineers sitting around the cabinet table. And I want to tell you too that my uh, experience in public life first elected when I was 27 in 1995, that serving as a member of provincial parliament has been a tremendously rewarding experience. A chance to make a difference for your hometown and a chance to make a difference for the province as a whole. I think everyone in this room would agree that the province of Ontario faces tremendous challenges today. The once mighty province that always led our country in job creation, economic growth, is now a have-not province. Instead of transferring funds to provinces like Newfoundland, we're on the receiving end. A lot of challenges ahead of us. But I have no doubt that engineers' training, background and experience would not only be appreciated, but are going to be required. And as we pull ourselves out of recession and work towards building Ontario's 21st century economy, I want to tell you that I want to have engineers in my corner as part of an Ontario PC caucus. No doubt in this room today, a wealth of knowledge and all the major sectors that the provincial government has responsibility for, energy, health, environment, education. And we know you all have good ideas on how to build a better Ontario. Because, in fact, building is something that you do each and every day. So it's time to take a step forward. Put those ideas into action. Become part of our team. And play a role as an MPP as a cabinet minister, and help to rebuild our great province. And it's really a shame that governments haven't done enough in the past to recognize a role that engineers play, to consult on important pieces of legislation and crucial decisions. After all, you wouldn't avoid talking to doctors or nurses when you're talking about health care reform. So why shouldn't professional engineers play a big role in sweeping reforms to infrastructure, on energy, on the controversial Green Energy Act. So I look forward to some further conversations on this. 
So I want to tell you, the Ontario PC government would take an entirely different path than the one we're on today. We are a party that would be one of new ideas, but also based on a proven track record of growing on Ontario economy. As I mentioned, and I'll talk a bit about, we've already brought forward a number of practical and affordable ideas in our 10 for 2010 plan to grow our economy, build for the future, and create jobs today. And given your interest in the public policy process, you wouldn't be here at the AGM otherwise. I look forward to your comments, and I look forward to standing with you as part of my team. Because in that next election, as we are doing today, we will present a focused, energetic, and forward-looking alternative to a tired and out-of-gas government today. So with that in mind, let me lay out four different choices that Ontario PC government would make to put us on a road to recovery. First, we would target tax relief to create jobs instead of these corporate welfare programs. You know, I just fundamentally disagree with the current government's approach that shows a fondness for picking winners and losers in the marketplace. Basically amounts to taxing you and taxing you and taxing you to give somebody else a grant because they happen to have the best lobbyists or told the best story in the newspaper. I think that's wrong. I strongly disagree. Let me give you an example. Just last July, Dalton McGinty gave a $263 million grant to France-based video game developer Ubisoft. Ubisoft in return for the grant so they would create up to 800 jobs over 10 years in Toronto. Quickly do the math. That works out to a startling $330,000 subsidy per job and some not for 10 years' time. I reject that. Instead, I believe that every Ontario business should be given the opportunity to compete on a fair and level playing field. It should be what you do and how you do it, not who you know. And that's why we continue to oppose the HST and the tax and regulation increases that are holding back our entrepreneurs and keeping our consumers at home. And quite frankly, the recession is the worst time to impose a new consumption tax that will raise expenses for families on everyday items from putting gas in your car, heat for your home, or getting your hair cut or taking your dog to the vet. I believe it's a bad deal for families because they have less money in their pockets that will kill jobs. Instead, a PC government would make the cost of living more affordable for all Ontario families. And we want business owners to be able to create those extra jobs and build their companies. For example, in our 10 for 2010 plan, we support a payroll tax holiday on all new hires. Why you'd want to tax a business that's finally adding men and women to the payroll in today's environment is beyond me. And we want to take on and bring some balance to the bloated and out-of-control bureaucracy at the WSIB that neither serves injured workers nor the businesses that support it. Second point. We believe that government must learn to live within its means. Ontario families and private sector businesses have all had to make tough choices. They've all had to scale back spending during these last few years, and we believe that government should as well. This is probably hard to believe, but at the current rate of spending, Dalton McGinty is actually on course to doubling our provincial debt under his term in office. So Dalton McGinty will have added as much to our provincial debt as all of the other previous premiers from Confederation combined. That's just not sustainable. And it's irresponsible. And it mortgages the future of our children and our grandchildren. So what will we do? Well, to combat this kind of out-of-control government spending, we're calling for a mandatory sunset review process that will force all ministries, agencies, boards, and commissions to justify their existence, to demonstrate value for the tax dollars they receive. And if they can't do it, they've got to go. That would free up more funds to focus on core frontline services and get our spending under control. 
and we want every single family and business in Ontario to know that their government will respect each and every tax dollar that they send to Queen's Park. So instead of trying to be all things to all people, the government should focus on clear priorities and spend where it's needed most on core services like frontline health care and infrastructure that would create the jobs of today and tomorrow. Third point. We recognize the tremendous cost of outdated and excessive and unnecessary regulation. Now, I know probably everybody in this room has dealt with this in one way or another. But understand how difficult it is to traverse the mountains of red tape and government bureaucracy that stand in the way of investment in job creation. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business recently estimated that complying with all of the regulations in the province of Ontario actually has cost the economy some $11 billion per year. I know we all believe that we can and must do better. And that's why, as part of our 10 for 2010 plan, we've called for a red tape commission that will eliminate outdated and un unnecessary regulations and free up business professionals to do their jobs allow entrepreneurs and business owners to do what they do best and invest and create jobs in their companies. And until that commission is in place, we've called for a freeze on all job-killing regulations. Now, a great example of that, the commission could start with the Professional Engineers Act, the keystone legislation of your profession. That last uh, major overhaul of the act, I believe, was 1984. 1984 is the same year that Apple computers first came out. I remember I had an Apple IIc around that time and a dot matrix printer. And I can only imagine what my job would be like today if I had to still operate with that kind of machinery. The same goes to this outdated legislation. And quite frankly, whether you're a professional engineer from New Delhi or North Bay, the act puts up major hurdles to getting the profession, particularly for those who are trained outside of our province. People in this industry have to deal with enough red tape, like the McGuinty government recently put into the conflict, the Ontario Building Code and Professional Engineers Act. It's been there for years. And courts have ruled in your favor, but the government has refused to take action. And meanwhile, you go out each and every day and put your licenses your livelihood's on the line. It's time to move forward. This red tape madness needs to end. Let's free up those resources for innovation and job creation. And fourth and finally, we will treat energy also as an important economic policy. In addition to red tape, the cost of energy and quite frankly the chaos around long-term energy planning in this province has become a major hurdle for businesses to invest, and for residences to pay their bills. And instead of some of these pie-in-the-sky energy schemes like the Samsung deal that will see us subsidize a foreign-based corporation by billions of dollars on our bills for the next 20 years and sideline the talents in the province of Ontario, we have a firm commitment to nuclear and hydroelectric energy in Ontario and restoring sanity to our energy planning. We would emphasize environmental sustainability on one hand, but economic success on the other. And not the former at the expense of the latter. I mean, we all agree. Renewable energy is important, but let's ensure that we embrace the most modern technology at the best price for ratepayers, and certainly not at the expense of turning lights out on our residences and our businesses in the province. Nuclear energy is affordable, it's reliable, it's emissions-free, and we have tremendous world-leading talent in that sector. But sadly, a decision on the expansion of Ontario's aging nuclear capacity has been deferred, it's been delayed, it's been dodged, one minister after another who, quite frankly, is afraid to overcome the pressures of the special interest groups. My friends, when it comes to nuclear power, we would move ahead. Our province's economy was built on providing affordable, 
reliable energy. It's always been a core strength, and we have tremendous talent and resources. So rather than jump into an ad hoc approach to energy, we'd pursue a pragmatic policy of growing and improving our power supply mix, including green and clean hydroelectricity and nuclear capacity. Friends, we can achieve that goal, but we require forward thinking, realistic long-term planning, and I think a lot of people in this room would have some expertise on the energy file. So friends, the ideas I've outlined today are all practical, they're all achievable. And quite frankly, all that is missing is the willpower, the initiative, and the leadership necessary to turn good ideas into action. I think we all know this. And the reason my grandparents came to Ontario from then Eastern Europe and built the future for their children and grandchildren. This is a province that should offer opportunity for all. We have a province that always had the best roads and the best schools and a booming manufacturing sector, reliable and affordable energy. And behind each and every one of those projects was a hardworking professional engineer dedicated to that cause. And friends, despite the challenges we face today, I know that Ontario's best days still lie ahead. I believe that Ontario can lead again. And that by working together, and with a few engineers in my caucus, we can restore Ontario to its rightful place as the economic powerhouse of our great country. Thank you very much. Well, I think uh, restoring Ontario to the economic powerhouse that it once was is a very great goal and one that's probably shared by most. Here. And, uh, and certainly one of the things we take pride in is in good governance is also having good opposition and I know that you're working very hard right now in that role and that keeps the government honest. And uh, so we appreciate the work you're doing now. We wish you best of success in next year's election. But right now we thank you very much for your time you spent with us. Oh, thank, thank, thank you, very you much. so thank kindly. You. And uh, here's just a small token of our appreciation. I have no idea what it is. <laughs>